Hi. In this tutorial video, we are going to see how to filter a list of documents using Flutterflow and by custom functions. So what are we going to achieve today? So here is my page where you see uh, events uh, or blog post where I have two tabs, published and draft, and I am filtering the post based on is it published, is it draft. Now, the expected result is on published tab, you are going to see list of published posts. On draft tab, you are going to see list of posts which are currently in draft status, right? So, there are two ways of how this can be done. The first way is what we all know, uh, a typical no-code solution using Flutterflow is we are going to query the collection of blog posts, get a list of documents, and filter it by, let's say, status draft in the draft tab. Same way, in the published uh, tab, we are going to query the collection of blog posts, get a list of documents, and filter it by status published. Now, this is what you see as a result here. While this is very, very fine early on, when you have less number of users, less content, your system will be very fine. But as the system scales, as you grow in number of users, more queries means you are losing more amount of money. For your cloud infrastructure, you are paying more and your system can get slower. So don't blame Flutterflow. There is an easier way of how you can fix using custom functions, which is what we are going to see today, right? So I'm going to be writing the custom function right in front of you to demonstrate how this whole thing works. It is not complex. This is uh, very, very easy. And you can adapt this code for multiple scenarios, right? It could be events where events are uh, uh, upcoming, completed, uh, or canceled, or whatever, right? Or it could be shops that you want to filter based on speciality, like grocery store, restaurant, etc. The same function, just by replacing uh, the query uh, variables, uh, or the function variables, arguments, you are able to achieve so. So let's see how we can write a custom function. So to write a custom function, we are going to go access the menu uh, on the left, right above the setting called custom functions. And in this, we are going to go to custom functions. So here I have set up a basic custom function where we are going to filter a list of blog posts by status. You can name it anything you want here. This is just a name of a function where we are expecting a return of document type of blog post, a list which is true. So make this true so that you can get a list of documents. If you keep it false, you're just going to get one document. So we keep it list of, we want multiple documents. So we keep it as a list true. And then function arguments. Function arguments are nothing but your input that you give to the function to, uh, to go through your magic code that you're going to write and give you this return type, which is the output of a function, okay? So there is only one output of this function, but there can be multiple input arguments that you can add on to. So our input argument here is we are giving it an input blog post, uh, which is of a type document, and the document being list of blog post, uh, which uh, with list being true, and then we are going to give it a status, which is a string. Uh, in our case, uh, for demonstration purposes, right? So as you set up this basic thing, if you go to the code tab, you're going to basically see this. This is what you would actually see. So ignore the error uh, as it, uh, as it uh, uh, creates a new function code, code base for you, the boilerplate code for you, because it is all it is telling you that uh, this, comp uh, this function will comp uh, compile completely fine, but it is going to return a null, right? So the first thing what we are going to do is we are going to declare uh, a null uh, list which we want as output. Let's say we, we want a list as an output and we want a list which is also of the type blog post record, correct? So we are going to copy this entire statement and we are going to paste it here, right? So, and we are going to call our output uh, as output oops, output blog post and this is going to be an 
empty array right and then we are going to say return output blog post right the moment we do this you see the error has disappeared so this this function is not going to do anything because there is nothing in between but it is going to compile just fine right so now for the magic part so to code uh, so our objective is now to we are getting a list of input blog post and we want to filter it based on a status which is a string so what we are going to first do is now that we have declared the list of uh, output so first what we are going to do is for each of the input we need to go through the list and for each of those documents we need to find if the status is draft or published correct so for each of this blog post record okay let's call it blog in this is my input list correct so what this basically does is it is going to run a for loop for every single blog post document that it is going to get. So let's say your input list has a list of 25 documents. It's going to go through uh, document one, document two, uh, and each document we are calling it blog in our input blog post, right? So, so that is what this for loop is going to do. And now we are going to introduce the status variable, so the status argument. So we are going to say if blog dot publish status equals equals status okay so what this basically if uh, if if function does is we are checking that particular parameter uh, called publish status which is part of our blog which is a single record of the blog post we are checking if that is equal to the status string that we are passing right so if that is equal to status what we are going to do is we are going to insert that document into our output list so here we can do two methods one is called add Perfect. So it throws an error here because it says that we cannot use an iterator, uh, which is an allowable expression. So to fix this, what we just do is add an exclamation mark at the input, right? So what this basically does is this if loop is going to check if the published status field in the blog post record is equivalent to status. Status basically means the string that you are passing input. Here you can pass it as published. Here you can pass it as draft, etc. So this is going to add. Once it is true, it is going to add this particular document blog into this list, and it is going to give you the output, right? So let us check the function. So here we go, and we add here. Let's say published, and this is document title whatever we are going to save we are going to add one more record which is going to be called as draft so we have two records and we want to filter out only the published ones so we run we should technically get only one result there you go so this is returning just fine one record right so let's add two ensure that it completely works we are going to add one more published so now we have two published and one draft so if we run we are supposed to get two documents in our result right so now you see here you are getting two instances that means you got two two documents which are of published so if we replace this to draft we should get one okay so we just get one so perfect so we are going to save this function this function is working now how do we use this function now let's go i have set up a new page 
where it's the same old inside a list. So here, what we are going to do, instead of making two queries, one on published, one on draft, we are going to go to the topmost uh, of the page, or and we are going to go query collection. We are going to query for blog post, and we are going to add list of uh, documents. And here we are not going to do any filtering, and we say confirm, right? So now we go to the list, and where we have the list of published documents, we instead of going to the regular backend query, we are going to go to generate children from variable, and we are going to call this published post. And we come to the variable, and here we go to custom functions, and point out to the custom function that we just wrote, and with the input blog post from variable B, our blog post document, and status, we are going to specify as published, right? So we are going to make no changes and we say confirm. This is going to generate a list of children. So here we are going to go to the published post item, feature image. This is the title. So we go to the published post item title and this is the except so we go to the published post item except right so same way we go into the draft we go to the list here we are going to call it draft post we are going to go to our custom functions choose the same function the input remains the same which is the parent query blog post documents with the status now being draft we are going to make no further changes. Again, uh, map these. Right. So this is the title again. Title. And this is our except. Right. Perfect. So let's take a look at the errors it says compile the custom function let it compile perfect and i think we are good to run so let's wait for the run to compile i'm i'm not editing this video as i post into the uh, uh, the blog so in the meantime uh, our intention is on the hobby, we are going to maintain uh, all basic tutorials that you might need uh, in Flutterflow, uh, likewise, or any other platform uh, where, where with a little bit of code, you can do wonders using amazing tools like Flutterflow. Of course, I mean, Flutterflow is not paying me to do this. I just love enjoying uh, using the tool. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's an amazing tool to uh, build uh, mobile and web applications. And in fact, uh, the entire the hobby application that we are uh, actually working on, which is on beta, uh, I'll pa paste the link uh, into the blog post, uh, which anyway you're going to. Uh, this is something which is completely built in Flutterflow with very minimal code and codes uh, that are uh, that I'm sharing with you. Uh, very uh, basic, basic functionality, but it's a very advanced uh, application. Uh, where you could uh, manage a complete community or you can even run an overreach like service in a very social setup. So our objective is to allow uh, 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 all the people who are not tech savvy uh, to uh, not get into uh, designing websites or mobile applications but of their own, but to use a complete social setup uh, to perform their uh, daily business activities, right? So there you go, our app has compiled and it's running. So let's go to the tab. And now here we see the same two results. And as we had in the old setup, right? The same results as we are, had in the old setup, but this one is just working with one query and we are filtering using a custom function. Whereas this one uses two queries, one for published, one for draft. 
that's it for this tutorial uh, thanks for watching bye bye